Peace, family. Peace. We are now live. Welcome back, family. Welcome back. Somebody said, I'm ready like Tevin Campbell. Shout oh, out. Oh, oh, oh. oh, man. Taking it back. Shout out Jason, Bernie. Shout out. Shout out to everybody. I see the fan page. Vicky Dillard's oh, fan oh. page is in the building. Oh, yeah. All right. Shout out the fan page. Okay. Shout out everybody in the chat. We are live. Let everybody know we live, family. We're going to be dealing with some an important topic tonight, uh, the power of divine feminine energy and uh, women who utilize that energy are often labeled as witches. Mm. And um, it's been violent in the past before, mm. Salem witch hunt, you know, all of that stuff. So it, it's, it's, it's gotten violent when women, the energy is so violent, this energy is so powerful that it scares a lot of people, a lot mm. of people. So uh, important show. I know the, uh, the queen is having a, um, a workshop coming up. So without further ado, well, Vicky Dilla, I want to welcome you back to the program. First of all, thank you, brother. I bow to you and your legendary show and work. Thank you so much, uh, Brother Rich, for having me here. Such a privilege. Indeed, indeed. Uh, let's get to a few ads, and then we're going to get started, family. Make sure you hit the like button. That's very important. Make sure you share the video. Let everybody know we're live, and we will be back shortly, family. Hey there, had a bad dream? I have dreams too. Some parts are scary and some parts are fun. Always remind yourself, it's only a dream and everything will be okay. I had a dream about being in a forest too. Check it out, my pet Petey was with me. Order your copy of Kayla Petey and the Forest on Amazon today. All right family, I also wanna give a shout out to my brother King Simon. One of the best when it comes to numerology, 347-496-1022. You can text him your full name and date of birth, and the brother will be sure to get back to you. He also has courses on Udemy.com, uh, introductory course on there, and that will uh, let you know about what the brother's really about. So check that out. Also, family, make sure you check out the website, blackmagicuniversity.com. We got all the financial and esoteric workshops that I have done in the last two years up there. And we're going to have physical merch and physical products real soon, family. So get familiar with the website, Black Magic University. All right, family. And with that being said, uh, we we with the queen right now, the queen of media, the queen of media right now, Vicky Dillard. Always, always, you're always doing your thing. You're always busy out there. You're always putting in the work. Um, important workshop you got coming up. And an important topic. What's the name of it? What's the name of it? This one is, is called The Secret Money in Your Womb 4. And um, our subtitle is um, The Treasure Trove Embodiment. And so I'm making it very clear that this is for grown women only, an intimate uh, webinar. So we're so, so excited about this. The Secret Money in Your Womb Part 4. So the first three was so wildly successful. So we're doing it again. Indeed. Indeed. Very, very important topic. Um I've been with my queen for a long time, so I know happy wife, happy life. Come on now. I, I, I know the energy. Oh. You know, I know how that is right there. Beautiful. So, uh, let's get right into it. Uh, what are you looking, um, what message are you looking to relay to the masses with talking about something like this? Mm. I just finished telling you about how violent it has gotten in the past with women tapping into this divine feminine energy. I got a sister that comes on here named Sister Myra. She calls uh, this energy Big Mama. Oh, yeah, it's powerful. It's powerful. Ooh, that's good. Talk to me about this big mama energy and why it's important that you deliver this message to the people. That's so yummy. And shout out to um, our beautiful sister and elder. Yes. Um, the reason um, I specifically wanted to discuss this is because of when, um, after I was diagnosed with a serious um, autoimmune illness related to uh, one of my organs, um, I couldn't even work a regular job. I couldn't stay on the job for four hours because of my symptoms. And I've worked for even longer than it was legal for me to work in my life. So that's all mm. I've ever known and done. So we're taught what? If you want something, you have to do what? Work hard, right? Mm. And so the way that you get money, the way you get resources, is you, mu if, is you must work hard. Well, I was also a runner for a long time and haven't been able to really do that in years. So my body was always very healthy. So what happens when your body doesn't do what you tell it to do? I'm not able to work a full time job now. So you're telling me I'm now violating these principles that you taught me that if you work hard, you can get what you want. But what if your body doesn't do that? What if you physically are unable, you know, to um, to work? So I began to go back into rediscovering 
really teachings that have already been out there, principles that have already been out there, African principles that have already been out there, you know, related to uh, the divine feminine and room magic. But spirit downloaded um, different types of revelation to me about that. And so while I was having problems with my vision, problems with my blood, problems with walking, problems with my organs, problems with my skin and my hair, and so much more, I was I was forced to be still and I was forced to go further in. And then because I was able to do some of the spiritual work because it forced me to really go on the inside of myself because I can't physically work now and I still need resources. As I begin to tap into more of my divine feminine energy, uh, Brother Rich, I recognized that I was the bank. And that money is an energy, money is a spirit, money spirit. So money can actually, the spirit of money, the energy of money can manifest in a number of ways. And so I came to the very real conclusion, I make money whether I work for it or not. And so when resources begin to come to me supernaturally, even when I was sick, even when I couldn't work, even when I couldn't clock in, and then I began to see a major shift in my business over a year's time. I said, I'm on to something. And so that's what really forced me, first of all, to tap more into this divine feminine energy, because guess what? I was prevented physically from operating in so much more of my masculine energy. Now, mind you, we have both traits in us, yes? But I'm a divine, I'm a woman, I'm a female. So I'm meant to predominantly operate in the divine feminine energy. Of course, the masculine energy has its place, no question. But I didn't have the balance, yes. And so it's interesting because all I've ever known was to work really, 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 really hard. This illness forced me to cease some of that labor, you see. And then I was able to attract certain things uh, operating in my feminine energy. So that's um, number one. Number two, that what the other thing that drove me to stay in this energy is not only to continue to magnetize resources, but also specific opportunities, ideas, creative ideas, and also pleasure. Yes, pleasure. And then the more I operated in this thing, I realized that everybody around me were also blessed by this. And I believe, honestly, because of the imbalance of the masculine energy at work in the world. And because there's not in har a harmony with the feminine energy, um, I believe that this is the cause of a lot of some of our troubles that we face today. So I believe that operating these spiritual principles, operating in magic, using our magic is actually uh, revolutionary. Oh, excellent, excellent, definitely excellent. Do you feel as though matriarchy is the um? Oh, I gotta put my. I'm sorry, guys. Do you feel as though matriarchy is the natural order of things? Like they say, we live on a, you know, a male-dominated society. So if women ran things a certain way, do you think it would be much better? I'm gonna say this. I believe, uh, brother Rich, in both of in the full expression. Yes. Mm -hmm. and operation of both the masculine and the feminine. Mm -hmm. um, we have to have them both. Mm -hmm. There is a unique freedom and space that the divine feminine needs right now, though. And because the imbalance is so off and so lopsided, for a moment, it may appear that we may need more space now, you see because this thing is so off. And I'm not saying that it needs to be exactly 50-50, you see? I'm talking about harmony, which is not necessarily about specific measurements, but we'll know it when we feel it, but it's so off right now. Having more of a flood of that divine feminine energy may be necessary right now because, you know, of the surplus of true toxic masculinity. And I don't associate that with the black men. Most, if you know anything about me, I rock and ride for the black masculine man. So you know, to be sure, when you hear me use that phrase, I'm certainly not using it the way that Becky's using it. 
I definitely, I definitely hear you. I definitely hear you. What, um, so how does, let me ask you this. How does this, um, divine feminine energy, how does it affect males? Cause I'm sure males want to know, like, what does it have to do with the masculine aspect of things? It has everything to do with the masculine aspect. What I'm finding some of this, I'm hesitant to say because of, um, Obviously, some of the secrets that I want to be able to break down specifically to our sisters when we begin to talk about this. That's why we talk about for grown women only. And I tell the mm. brother, make sure that you send your woman so that we can break these secrets down. Mm. So some of the spe specifics that I want to get into, I don't obviously want to say here, but because of the unique dance, I'll say this much between the masculine and the feminine, um, what I've noticed is that the more I'm operating in my divine feminine energy, I don't have to get on YouTube and scream about how black men are crazy. They're losers. They're not doing anything for us. What mm -hmm. I find is men around me automatically start to provide and protect me mm. in some way, form or fashion. Mm. So I found that interesting because I didn't, make a demand of them. You see, mm. it was with me. The way it affects the man, and I'm going to say this much because you're playing with me right now, is I got all the cards, baby. Ooh, you, it's, it's all me. It's, it's, it's all me. And I can't go no further. You play too much, Brother Rich, because you always ask the best questions, but it's all me, okay? Mm. It's all me. And we really don't believe that. We believe that it comes through yelling and screaming. Sometimes we believe he just doesn't get us. We believe that it's all his fault. And let me tell you something. When I started to tap into the subtleties, mm -hmm. when I start to do my shadow work, when I say my shadow work, this has to do with going inside to look at any areas that might be what I call spiritual blockages, right? Mm -hmm. um, anything that might be preventing. Anytime I found that I was upset about something, I had anxiety about something, anything that served as a trigger for me, that means that there's something invisible in you that's going on. So I had mm -hmm. to take a look at that, you see, and do work. When I mm -hmm. started to do that secret shadow work, and heal myself. I started to play with this power, brother. And then I realized, oh, look at, look at this right here. Look at this. Look at this right here. It's really all me. And just like a conductor, I did this series called, I don't know if I ever talked about this on your show before, this a spiritual series that I did called The Conductor. But before I did the teaching sometime back with my students, I did some research that I found was so fascinating, Brother Rich. And you know, when you deal with the, uh, uh, a conductor with an orchestra, right? Mm -hmm. When he has his baton in his hand and he's directing the violins and the bass and the cello and the drums and everybody, he doesn't have an instrument in his hand. Mm -mm. They have the sheet of music in front of them so they know what to play. So why is he there? Mm -hmm. You see? And so, and a lot of times when he's moving, they're not looking at him the whole entire time you feel me they are glancing at him but for them they, they don't look at him you know non-stop without a break i found it fascinating and i wonder was he even necessary i found some research on it and some scientists actually put some some lights and some of all the tech stuff at the end of his baton and they put it throughout the theater and they put it in certain places on some of the instruments and you know what they found what? they found that the lighting when it was over made a beautiful uh, uh uh a beautiful not pyramid but a beautiful um i forget what the word is but it was a beautiful type of art that this this thing made and there was a level of harmony and they found that having the conductor there was was really still necessary even though everybody had the music everybody knew what to play and the quality and the sound of the music was really good. So what I realized is that even though he didn't have an instrument and even though he wasn't physically touching them, his movements, you see, mm -hmm. his baton, he was controlling the orchestra. Mm -hmm. This is what we as a divine feminine do mm -hmm. <laughs> with our energy without mm -hmm. directly touching it. See, we have long range power. That's our mm -hmm. magnetism. Mm -hmm. We just gonna stop right there. Mm, excellent! Wow! Wow! I know the <laughs> I know the sister. Wow! That's deep. Wow! 
So uh, the, the the thing is, um, I seen somebody wrote early in the comments. They said, um, American uh, feminism sucks. When somebody hears you say divine feminine energy, a lot of people automatically equate it with feminism that we see on TV and we hear about Margaret Sanger, things mm -hmm. of that nature. So what's the difference between American feminism and divine, uh, this divine aspect of feminism that you're talking about? Because there's a, there's a clear difference, but a lot of people just think it's the same thing. It's such a good question. I am not trying to destroy my men. I am <clears throat> not trying uh, to destroy masculinity. In fact, I'm doing the opposite. When we're talking about the divine feminine energy, the divine feminine being, I'm actually saying that by me being who I am, I get to actually increase mm. and allow space for the man to move into the fullness of his masculinity. I'm welcoming, baby. I'm welcoming, summoning God today. <laughs> masculine man. So that's the difference. I'm not just trying to get rid of him. I want that. I want, I can't stay. I hate no baby. No. Mm. And I'm never that type. I told my audience the other day, Brother Rich. I said, look, any brother that did me wrong. It's never made me look at all black men as crazy. It's just that specific brother is just is forever, henceforth, even forevermore. It's off my radar. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I don't care if he gets married again, have kids. I don't care if he makes seven, six figures. I don't even, I don't want nobody to say he's experiencing karma. Like, I don't even care. I don't even think it's my business to know if the man is still alive. I'm mm -hmm. moving. I, is it obituary on him? Like, I don't even, like, I don't even care as long as you're not in my life. Because I understand where I'm going, I understand who I am, and I know there's a greater glory. And in due course, you see, um, I'm going to properly connect with something that was way better. I don't even want any of the vestiges, you see, Ooh. of that former experience because I know who I am and I know what ultimately I'm going to attract. No, I need that. No, that's definitely that's definitely powerful. That's definitely powerful. Once again, family, welcome everybody coming, starting to come in the room. Welcome everybody in the room. We got an important topic tonight. Uh, the name of the show is actually Magnetic Witches. Mm. Um, and don't get scared by the word witch. The reason why I chose that is because it seems as though any, uh, any of the queens or goddesses that choose to tap into the divine feminine energy gets called a witch. And that's pretty unfortunate. Um, talk to me about how, uh, let's, let's go here, uh, Vicky. Do you think that a lot of women are scared to tap into their feminine energy because they're scared to be called a witch because of the history and, you know, religion makes it so such a bad thing. Like, wait a minute, you you practice this or you prepare roots or you do herbs or you mm -hmm. you pray for people or you do that or you do this. Do you think it's it kind of turns a lot of sisters off from tapping into the divine feminine energy? Two things. No question. Absolutely. To your question, um, as it relates to. Um, does it make sisters fearful to actually operate and tap into their power because they're afraid to be shunned? Mm. Yes, that's one. The other is many of them um, are turned off about it because we're told that witches have to do with demonic satanic right. activity. Right. Yes. So some women don't want nothing. To, they don't want to know nothing about it. That mm. they don't want to. You, you see, because we demonize it, and then when we were told about witches, our witches growing up. What images stick in our mind? When we think of the Wizard of Oz, we think of some scary, shriveled up white yeah. lady with scary yeah. nails just out. I mean, they make it so scary. They make it so repulsive. So whenever you mention anything, you know, about the occult, anything about metaphysical life, anything about magic uh, or different forms of alternative spirituality, it's meant to make you afraid and it's meant to make it so scary that you never make inquiry. You never seek it out in the first place because you have this filter of it being satanic and demonic, you see. Mm -hmm. So I believe that those two things are at work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, definitely, definitely. Uh, do you get offended personally if somebody calls you a witch? Does that offend you personally? No, no it doesn't because I know what it means, mm -hmm. <laughs> you see. Mm -hmm. When someone calls me that, I was at one time as ignorant as they, you see. Mm -hmm. um, so it doesn't bother me in that way. Now, if it's a troll or somebody, you know, that just, I mean, usually people that are trolls don't have power at home. The wife don't want to 
listen to them. Ain't nobody taking, you know, so they get the chat and oh, you wish, you know, that's the most power. They, that's all the time they heard you see when they get into somebody's chat. Oh, yeah, that's facts. That's, that's <laughs> Nowhere facts. else with their words register, you see. Yeah, yeah that's listen, facts. you know, when they're lose at home, they got to get in somebody's chat. So it doesn't bother me because I understand those different dynamics are at work, but mostly now I don't that doesn't bother me because I know what it means and I know it's meant to uh, scare people. When we look at the word witch, can we do that? I'm in my, oh, my teaching, yeah. my teaching yeah. mode now. Mm -hmm. When we look at the word um, witch, and I'm just going to write this. Mm -hmm. my when we look at the word witch, yes, when we look at the root, mm -hmm. even the first few, it has its connection. Wait, let me put this on the screen. Yeah. When we look at the word witch, uh -huh. the first two uh, letters, the root there, you see its connection with the word wise and wit. Mm. Mm -hmm. And even we use this word now, whiz, yes? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That has to do with wisdom. When you're calling a woman a witch, Woo! it has to do with the fact she's a wise woman. You wisdom. See? There you go. There you so go. It does not bother me. And uh -huh. again, I want folks to know my sisters and brothers, because you have a powerful channel mm -hmm. with so many yummy different people with different spiritual systems and practitioners and backgrounds and religions. So I want them to know that I'm not invoking a particular spiritual system when I'm utilizing these words. You know, I'm just a girl that knows stuff that I don't know. And so when I do the etymology of a word and when I'm channeling something, when I'm downloading something, I'm doing it based you know, on how spirit moves me and my unique system and contribution to the world while bowing to other spiritual and religious systems. So I want them to understand that the definition that might be appropriate for another spiritual system is not one that I'm invoking here. Mm. You know, I'm, I, I think I said this before, but I'm, I'm like a heavily spiritual person. Like I'm, I, 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 just, I can see, I can see a lot of things and I can tell you get a lot of downloads. <laughs> I can, I can tell from your, you know, from your movements, your laughter, everything. I can tell. I can tell. I can tell you get super downloads. I can tell. I can tell. I, I see it. I, I can tell you get super. I know it. I, I'm, I'm up there with, with the spirit world. I'm up there. So I can, Indeed, you are up there, brother. I'm just you, laughing. You get super downloads. I can tell you get super downloads, man. And, I'm, and, to be, it's, and it is so, it's such an honor. It's such an honor. And when you go through sort of the tumultuous past for the decades that I've been around, 43 years, um, it's not, um, you find out what it's for now, you see? And I didn't even know how my power worked. I was trying to be a part of other spiritual cliques and groups that rejected me. I was willing to pay money. I was willing to give time. I was willing to do the work. I was willing to do whatever they told me to do. But every group that I tried to get into, I was rejected from. And that was divinely orchestrated. And some years ago, before my mother moved to Colorado, I'm, I'm a Mississippi girl, born and raised in Mississippi, but I was the first to move to Colorado. Um, before she moved here, um, I was, yes. No, good, good, good. Okay, I was crying, literally crying, Brother Rich. Mm. And I was explaining to her an incident, how I was so humiliated with this spiritual group and what this lady did, she wouldn't allow me to be a part of this and the third and, and the, the leader of this particular organization. He actually apologized to me because he was wanting to promote me to something and his wife actually stood up in the meeting and said over her dead body. <laughs> God, mm. hey. So I was like, Oh my. And I said, they just don't want me. Why is this always? And you know what my sweet mother said, who has no personality like mine whatsoever. Yes. She said to me, she said, maybe God wants to teach you himself. Mm. <laughs> mm. That was the best spiritual advice I ever received in my life after having doors shut in my face. It was all divinely orchestrated, though, me trying to get in those groups, you see? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because I never would have been driven to my own spiritual closet and my own spiritual space to tap into some of the stuff that I began to tap into to get some of these downloads and supernatural encounters. So anyway, I just wanted to throw that out there. Mm -hmm. What about um we talked about witch? What about you know uh bitch? Sometimes when a woman exerts a certain power, a certain force, people be like, yo, why is she acting like a you know B I T C H? Because she's like she got like a certain amount of energy and power with her. What do you think about that word? Should women embrace that word? Should women uh go away from that? It's sort of like the word and you know, nigga, like like what yes. should 
what what should the sister's reaction to that word be, you think, personally? Like, she's a B-I-T-C-H. It's not, um, I'm not going to pretend that it's easy to just dismiss someone saying that because different people have different intentions, you know, when they use that word. Yeah, yeah. But for the most part, you're right when they use that word. It always has a negative connotation. And a lot of times it's used when there is, you know, a strong expression of power. Let me say this. Mm -hmm. When I was um, dealing with certain attorneys, generals, federal officials, state officials, mm -hmm. judges, county judges, state judges, federal judges, when I was dealing with uh, prosecutors, and I'm talking about civilly before criminally, mm -hmm. when um, I was giving them a lot of work and policies were being shifted, um, I was upsetting a lot of powerful spaces and places. Wall Street, that's when this national organization flew me to Chicago, flew me to uh, DC, flew me to Seattle, Washington, and I'm forgetting where else, um, to have a seat at the table with some pretty powerful people. Brother Rich, when these things were happening, there was that God was in my mouth. I didn't know it at the time. And this invisible court was moving with me that was starting stuff in these different environments. Mm -hmm. And I was channeling information and exposing stuff, knowledge that I did not have on my own. So when I say I know stuff I don't know, I can go into a particular environment and spirit will just start to tell me stuff. I begin to move and things will become upset. The mm. judges would react in a way where Damn. they treated me like a bitch. You see, mm. Mm. the prosecutors, the officials would treat me. They were called in for no reason. The police in the civil case to try to shut me down because in many of those instances, I was representing myself, which was known as pro se. Mm -hmm. But I was costing them a lot of money because of the uh, legal procedures. I had them in their own. I was embarrassing them because records were being made. I was also embarrassing them because certain news organizations were picking up. My, my case is against them. They were picking up the work I was doing against them. So Vicky was a problem and I was doing this alone. So that energy I was getting that you a bitch energy, you see, you a problem, you expressing a little too much power. I've become better acquainted with that because I understand just like mother earth as we call her. Yes. Or sister earth. I think some of our elder sisters tell us to call it sister earth and mother universe. Uh, we know about Earth. Earth still has tsunamis. Yes. Earth has earthquakes. Earth has volcanoes. Yes. Earth is a feminine space. And yes, there can be calm seas, but it requires the volcano. There has to be an eruption sometime because I found that when the volcano erupts during my research, that it helps to cleanse the air for many years to come. They said that some of the hidden resources under the Earth is mm -hmm. often shaken and brought to the surface when there's a volcano. Mm. The environment about it is actually cleansed. So it's necessary that though we're in a feminine space and people see me in both areas sometimes, I'm moving in both energies, that's because I'm like a demolition woman. When you're getting ready to build a skyscraper in a certain place downtown and there's an old building there, sometimes you got to tear down something first before you build yes mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. that's something specific that the divine feminine woman has the capacity to do but we also we're the chaos too we're that stuff that was in the beginning the chaos the formless matter it's facts. before let there when he was saying let there be light let there be light it says that the spirit was hovering over the water over darkness you see there was chaos there was disorder first before it was brought to order so that has to be you know, sort of that, that's a, that's a part of at least my assignment. So mm. I want to say to our sisters that's listening, it becomes easy to not let it in when somebody calls us that now when you know who you are. Mm. And the moment I began to spend time spiritually tapping into the spirit realm, coming to know who I really am, you really become unstoppable. You become dangerous like that. You really become dangerous like that. There's not a lot that um, will stop you or shake you from that. Now, I've been under a lot of warfare. Don't get me, don't get me wrong. I have my moments, mm -hmm. my very lonely moments of feeling like the weight of the world was on my shoulders and um, threatened to quit, threatened to give it up, threatened to take myself out of the game. 
when my back was up against the wall by so many powerful forces. And I didn't, I couldn't because I felt like I wasn't even my own. I felt like I was being moved about, you know, by the spiritual force that was even beyond me. And so um, I would just say it becomes easier, brother, when we know who we are. When we know who we are, you don't, re you don't, um, you don't relent ultimately when it comes to your power. You may need to take moments of retreat. Don't get me wrong now. You may need to take moments of retreat, but you're not going to ultimately, you see, give up. Uh, it's powerful. <laughs> it's powerful. Tell the people um, before we continue, we got about we got about uh 30 minutes, 20, 20 to 30 minutes left. Uh, we're not gonna be here too long tonight, family. The uh the queen is having a workshop on Sunday, and I would definitely love for y'all to sign up yeah. uh to learn more about this uh divine feminine energy that the sister's speaking of. So tell the people how can they sign up for this workshop. Yes, you, you can go to my website at unpurposewithvicky.com. Um, that's on purpose with V-I-C-K-I.com. Can, can the can the fan page can y'all put that on the and I and I'll share it on the screen? Can you could you write that? Uh Vicky's fan page, please write the website down. Go ahead, Vicky. I'm sorry. Awesome, no problem. Yes, on purpose with Vicky.com. There should be a link on the first page, or just go to purchase store and you'll mm. see my um webinar products, digital products, and you can sign up right there. I want my sisters to know that when you sign up, my web manager, she's going to send you the link for the Zoom so that you can tap in with us live for the virtual webinar. And she's gonna send you a different um, email about an intimate attire and instructions. Now, the reason brother, um, this particular one, we're gonna call it for grown women only, an intimate webinar is because things around intimacy, we'll just call it that, you, you see, and I want my people to read through the lines, mm -hmm. especially the divine feminine body. In essence, I'm talking about our literal physical bodies have been, policed and it's also been unfortunately terribly exploited you see in some ways mm -hmm. so when we see somebody like no disrespect suki with the good coochie or you know cardi b or something like that some of us you know like oh god you know you know but i, I don't mind the twerk sometimes but you know you know some of that's a little too this other thing but the, the beating the beat is still not too much does she have mm -hmm. to hit it like that so, <laughs> so there's a balance with this thing there's it's, it's, it's a it's power with it but I want to teach us what I've come to know over time and how we actually tap into our divine femininity and sexuality in a way. It's a type of power that's meant to create, to bring things into existence. And I want us to get into that with this um, particular webinar. We're going to talk about our divine feminine essence. So our actual feminine energy field, our electromagnetic field. I'm going to talk about how by us doing the work, how we exercise our long range power. And when you're dealing with the magnet, obviously, if I, if you were seeing two magnets right now, the magnet automatically comes together because you attract what you are. Mm -hmm. That's what's going to be the essence of this is I'm going to pull in my destiny my resources, the life of my dreams, because I'm going to embody, I'm going to become the thing that I'm trying to attract. No longer is Vicky going to get so frustrated and disturbed to try to make a bunch of phone calls all the time, send a whole bunch of emails, send a whole bunch of texts, begging, pleading people, becoming very desperate. When I see myself getting in that mode, brother uh, uh, Rich, in certain things, I know I'm moving out of that feminine essence because I have to relax into this thing and know there are some spiritual things that I need to do in order to pull it to me. And I want to talk about that. So when women, uh, the Queens and uh, brothers say this too, that they, they'll say something like, um, I'm sorry, King Simon, um, V I C K I no two K's. Oh, v say, say that again. V I, v -I C K I. Okay. King Simon is V I C K I. Let's take that off the screen. Um, I was waiting. There for it is. This. I do have it on there. My name. Oh, okay, yeah, you got it on your name, yeah, on purpose with Vicky, yeah, yeah yes, so, sir, on your name, okay, yeah, King Simon. Well, thank you, King Simon. Oh, Thanks, King. he got it. Thank Thanks, you. King. Yeah, he's one, um, Queen. If you ever want a numerology reading, he's one of the best in the world. You know, he's recently, um, I recently saw a few of his messages on Instagram, mm -hmm. and so, um, yes, yeah, so I'm looking forward to he's sharp in due course reaching out to yeah. our brother. He's sharp, it I would be an honor. I would definitely recommend him to you. He's sharp. 
If Brother uh, Rich is recommending, I'll, I'll take your recommendation. <laughs> no, definitely. Um, so when people you talked about uh, being a magnet, attracting what uh, and, uh, and people attracting who they are. Yeah. When 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 uh, the queens say, let me put this on the fan page. When the queens say, and some of the brothers say, there's a shortage of men out there. That's why a lot of the sisters are single. There's a lot of single sisters out there. And a lot of people say there's a shortage of good men out there. Uh, you outnumber us or we're in jail or, you know, a lot of reasons. Do you think that's BS because you attract what who you are? And regardless of the statistics, if you are who you are, you're going to attract who you are. So do you think that 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 mindset of I'm going to attract who, who I am, regardless of white supremacy, regardless of uh, whatever may be going on, I'm going to attract who I am? Or do you think that, realistically speaking, there's a shortage of men out there, and that's why the sisters is is, is uh, lonely? You said an interesting phrase. You said, mm -hmm. realistically speaking. Mm -hmm. As alchemists and magicians, can uh -oh. we change our reality? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Are we mere mortals over here at Black Magic 363? Mm. Talk to them. No, baby. If you want something you never had, you got to do something you've never done. Here we go. When I didn't have the answers for the many problems and challenges and difficulties in my life, I still didn't stop seeking. I did not, Brother Rich, for the life of me, settle for what everybody else around me accepted and was getting. So when people look at me and say, why is Vicky ship shaping the world like that? She's just over in the corner in Colorado somewhere using her laptop and a phone and she's having this kind of impact sort of undercover, right? Sort of underground. Why are all of these strange things happening? Is because I said to myself, I ain't just no YouTuber. Don't put me in don't bind me don't restrict me i'm not trying to be average and mundane and like everybody else i know that i am more than what meets the eye i know that i am a multi-dimensional being and that there's power available to me in other dimensions and i may not know how to get it yet tap into it fix it do it right code it right but i'm going to continue on the journey until I am able to experience something I've never had because I'm willing to do what not everybody else is willing to do. So when you first, it goes back to the point I made a few minutes ago, we must know who we are, our divine nature. When you understand that your nature is divinity, is divine, you will understand that the world that everybody else accepts it's because they accept themselves as just a 2D, 3D individual. I'm not going for that. I don't live in just one dimension. To be honest with you, a part of my assignment in the earth is to mix the worlds. <laughs> it's to merge the worlds. Yo, see, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jacob's ladder, I am. Jacob's Ooh. ladder was about having access to multiple dimensions going up and down having an interdimensional passport. That's what Vicky's going for. So that's you. And so the people that have problem with men and problem with this and problem, I was disabled making a hundred and some dollars a week. And when I changed my mind, when I could hardly see and walk and could have been taken out for a number of reasons, Brother Rich, Supernatural things around me started to happen and everybody says, Vicky, that don't make no sense. I live like that. I don't fool with mere mortals. It's okay to be a mere mortal. I'm saying, I'm just not trying to be that. So if you're going to deal with me, I'm just saying, I'm, about, I'm in the realm of magic, impossibility. Let's play with it with fits and starts, like you're in a lab with your white jacket, you know something is possible. Sometimes when you get them beakers out and you've been fooling with chemicals, you're going to blow something up, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes. Yeah. But every now and then you're going to find a solution. Something's going to flow right. That's me. 
So if that's you, mere mortal, if that's your mindset, if you accept that, that's your reality. But as the original man and the original woman in particular, we are the original magicians. Life began through and by us. And so my point is you can remake your reality is all I'm saying. Mm -hmm. You can remake that reality. Mm -hmm. And I'm the exception in everything. That's what I say. Mm. In everything, I'm going to work my power. I'm going to work my magic. I did a, uh, I'm going to say this really quickly. I did a post the other day, yesterday. Ice T put up a post talking about he got robbed. Did you see that? About the gas, about the gas. Yeah, that was funny. That was funny. That was funny. <laughs> oh, man. <coughs> Excuse me. He said he got robbed at the gas station. Somebody, he called the police and when his hands stopped shaking, all this stuff, he said the police wanted to know did he know he was. He said yes. He told the police it was pump nine. Pump number nine, yeah. Pump number nine. <laughs> And so obviously this has to do with the fact that <clears throat> these gas prices are absolutely outrageous. Yes, they are outrageous. But my point was, that's also a fear thing there to where if we don't make sure that our mind um, doesn't succumb to fear, you know, we're going to we'll start penny pinching. Love you back, beloved. Mr. Hotel, I love you back. Um, you'll start penny pinching. You see what I'm saying? Your mindset will start to become very limited and you'll begin to manifest stuff like that. When I got a breakthrough in my finances, you know what I started doing? What? I stopped buying all off-brand stuff. Mm, mm. <laughs> but I would go, I would buy a few things and then I would get threefold name brand things. Mm, mm. Stuff started to happen. And the reason why I say that there are little mental things in, that we need to do because when you are, the universe will provide to us what we require, you see. So mm -hmm. if you go to the store and I'm thinking that, I know I need bread, right? But if I don't have a coupon for it, I'm sorry, this is years ago, but if I don't have a coupon for it, I'm not sure I'm going to get it. No, I need the bread whether I have a coupon for this thing or not. So mm -hmm. I started to change that expectation. And the more I did that, I realized, you know, that resources, Increase started to flood. So that's a form of magic that I do. I infuse magic in every single part as much as possible of my life. And so I know I'm going on a bit of a tangent here, but I want you to know we don't have to accept what everybody else accepts. When you know who you are, when you know that you have power here and in the heavenly realms, and you know how to magnetize and to merge those powers so that you're able to have a greater experience here in the earth realm, that's the life we're talking about. We're going back to black magic in this piece. That's what's wrong with the world. Mm. Powerful fire. Let's let's get let's get to um let's take a couple of questions. Sure. And then we all close it up. Man, family, this is this is energetic. This is elect electric. This is electricity oh. right here. Thank oh man, you. this is electric. Family, give me uh before we get to Q and A. Family, it's important you hit the like button. That's important. Like I tell you, family, hit the like button. It, it helps the algorithm. It helps this channel get yes. known to people who are looking for information like this. A lot of people are looking for information like this. They don't know where to find it. Hitting the like button helps that. So I appreciate if you hit the like button. We got about 1,100 people in here. I appreciate if Welcome. all of y'all yeah. hit the like button. Also, family, uh, make sure you donate to the channel if you can. That's yeah. greatly appreciated. Support the channel that supports you. The Cash App is at the bottom of the screen. Also, the sister's having a class on Sunday, March 27th. King yeah. Simon got it on the screen. You can go to the website on purpose with Vicky dot com yeah so besides so besides that let's get to some q a uh, i want to yeah. want to allow y'all to ask a couple of questions before we get out of here but i definitely want to thank y'all for tuning in with me tonight i'm actually heading down to atlanta family tomorrow night so um i won't be going live tomorrow night but when i get hit the a i'm gonna link up with you know red and blue uh do something with them I'm going to be filming in the A. Yeah, yeah. But I'm going to be in the A. Uh, I'm leaving in the A tomorrow night, family. So uh, I won't be live. But next week, I'll continue. I got a, a bunch of shows lined up for you all next week. Powerful shows. Let's get to some Q&A, family. All right. I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud thank, of you. Thank you, sis. I mean, hey, you know, one of the things that I never forgot, my queen never forgot, I signed up for your last, one of your last workshops. And... um. Yeah. 
the one of the main things that stuck with me, you said magic over logic, right? Come on now. Is that that's what you said, right? Magic over logic. You got it. Yes, sir. Yeah, that, yeah that, just that simple phrase. I just I keep that with me every day. Keep I that with love me every that. Day. I keep love that. that. Yeah, keep I, that with me every day. It's oh, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. I love that. Uh, May I say this? We're waiting on the question. Yeah, really quick. Yeah. I mm -hmm. want to make this point: the secret money in your womb. That's a strange concept on its face for some. But one of the things I also want to say to my sisters concerning the womb, the womb is an organ um, that is electric and it has an intergalactic connection of magnetism. Talk to me. It, it, <laughs> intergalactic magnetism. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I'm sorry. I had, to, I had to emphasize that. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Yes. Spirit gave me a powerful revelation ooh, that I can't say here about who's present when you are in the act of you know what, man, we finna have a good time meeting my sisters <laughs> and what we can create. I'm going to prove it to you. I'm going to give you evidence of this. I can't say it here, but the womb, which this is a revelation I gave in one of my other courses. And again, these are spiritual African beliefs about um, the preciousness of the womb. But I know my teaching is a little different because spirit gives me different revelations on things. And this is what fascinated me. The secret money in your room is about, we have this electric magnetic space, yes, in us. Watch this. So when you conceive, when you conceive for the first few days, then for the first few weeks until what, maybe 40, 50 something days approximately, the baby doesn't even have a heartbeat. The heartbeat doesn't even come until about 40 some odd to 50. I'm saying approximately. That's not the exact time frame, but they're about time frame. Mm -hmm. It is my belief that our wounds are magnetizing the soul. And then it takes about that much time for the soul to make its way there. And that's when the baby has the heartbeat. That space is energetic, which means we can not only make brother rich human beings, which is the highest form of life, brother. Mm. We can also come up with creative business ideas because that's an energetic space. There are some spiritual rituals that I talk about that we do with our wounds mm. that uh, 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 generates, yes, that generates power, you see? And that's why it doesn't matter if you are 22, 62. It doesn't matter if you've had um, uh, your womb removed. You see, it's an energetic space. And I'm talking about how we still use that space energetically to create resources, to create favorable circumstances and situations in, in our lives and to manifest our unique purposes and the resources that come with that. I wanted the sisters to know that that's a strange thing to talk about the secret money in your womb. But this is kind of where I'm going with it when it talks about the magnetism and how we have the power to pull these things um, um, uh, energetically to us. But I'm going to talk about how we can use that universal power for other things. It's powerful. Let's uh, get to this first question. Um, Vicky, what do the men have to do after their woman is done with your course stay your out the way brother brother just just stay out there just you smile just, for 90 ooh. days <laughs> oh shit yo you said 90 days oh god damn that must be a powerful cord 90 days ooh. let me tell you i'm telling you brothers man i say this all the time i say this all the time if you if you tend to your garden your garden will tend to you if you tend to your garden, your garden will tend to you. If you tend to your garden, your garden will tend to you. Yes, some of you may think she's too masculine. She's rough around the edges. She's bust too much. She does this. Just invest and allow her the opportunity to transform. And that is to say, brothers, all you need to do is make sure she has the coin. Mm. Make sure she has the coin and just stay out the way of magic. Don't mess with the magic. When a woman finds out she's pregnant, Brother Rich, and she's what, only a month along, two mm -hmm. months along, and what if, God forbid, she starts to do stuff with her womb, right? What if she starts to mess, you know, with the fetus while the fetus is trying to develop? What happens when you plant a seed in the earth 
one day and then two days later you pull up the seed will there be a harvest mm -mm. so don't mess with it give her an opportunity to get in the groove of these rituals because we're going to be talking about consistent things that we do on a daily and weekly basis give her a chance to get in the groove of her femininity after that you know what you do next brothers to answer your question mr hotel you receive God, mm. today it's gonna be good because you are going to experience when the woman is moving in the fullness of her femininity everybody around her that's within her electromagnetic field they're going to brother some of you are all are messed up now because you're trying to get promotions you're trying to get contracts you're trying to make stuff happen baby when you have a happy wife i posted that <clears throat> from a therapist a doctor on my um instagram page vicky x dillard you can see it on my instagram page vicky x dillard and he was talking about statistically and based on pure research how um uh, uh that in relationships and marriages in particular they value a, a loving marriage over a career and then he specifically talks about black men and he made the point that when men basically get married they show and prove how when they're in good loving relationships that is a loving wife now mm -hmm. um they find that their health is improved their money improves every area of their life improves so she is absolutely key brothers to your success just don't get in the way stay out the way and smile and then after that receive that's what you can do <laughs> and thank you no definitely definitely oh what is that king sorry what did he just say hey, well, uh, reverend ike used to say uh money is a feminine spirit a feminine energy wow he said money is women my goodness yeah. That's interesting because I have a slightly different perspective, but in terms of magnetizing it, I absolutely agree. I absolutely agree. Yes. Indeed. That's beautiful. <clears throat> Love even, Reverend Ike. May you rest in power. Even in the book, uh, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill, they talked about the, about the power of combining the feminine energy with the masculine energy and how that can increase wealth. Wow. You know, so That's good. Yeah, yeah, you know, a lot of brothers I know that's getting getting to the bag. They all got women, you know, and I I tell brothers, you know, and brothers, you know, they just look at me like I'm crazy or something. But you know, there's a science to that. When you got a, a wife at home and she brings a certain energy, a certain spirit to you, she um energizes your dreams and your and your mm. ambition. Mm. You know, without that, you know, it's like, ah, oh, man, I don't, you know. So it, it is. Let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. I'm going to ask you one more question. It's going to come from me. Then we're going to end because I want people to definitely sign up for the uh, workshop this Sunday. The sisters to sign up this Sunday. Let me see if I see that link again in the chat. Let me see real quick. Sure. I'll find it. I don't see it now, but I'll find it. On purpose with Vicky.com. On purpose with Vicky.com. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's right. Yeah. Yeah. It's right on. Uh, King Simon, if you could post that again, that'd be great. Appreciate my brother King Simon. Uh, you said yeah. earlier we was talking about Big Mama energy and mm -hmm. women, that divine feminine being the. Uh, that primordial darkness. Come on. Uh, you know, from the darkness came the light. Mm. So do you think that that's one of the reasons why, you know, we often look at the light as being superior, but really the dark is more Ooh. superior than the light. Come on. Do, you, do you think that's one of the reasons why a lot of the queens usually play the back and they allow their brothers to get the light mm -hmm. because the brothers was born from the light, but the sister, the divine feminine was born from the darkness. So you thinking you the light, but really the darkness is the light. And it's like, uh, you get what I'm saying? Like, so, so I believe I get yeah. what you're saying. It's so good the way you just explained that. And let me say this. Yeah. The womb, the fetus, the baby is developed in darkness. Yes. Mm -hmm. The seed is developed in darkness. Mm -hmm. I do my best in, work, Brother Rich. In darkness. Mm. Oh. oh, I knew she was going to say it. in darkness. I do my best in work. Darkness. I do my best work hidden. Mm. I do my best work. This is the principle that I keep talking about from Matthew chapter six. This is why I say I use the Bible as a book of magic. It is not just a religious text. Number one, of course, because most of the principles that's in there were stolen from Af Af ancient African texts anyway. And the Bible just renamed them, you know, put new names on them and flipped them and stuff. But Matthew chapter six, Jesus makes a prince ma made a point. He says, he says to go into your closet, shut the door behind you. Matthew six, chapter six, listen. And the God who sees you in secret, one translation said the God that is invisible will reward you openly. Mm. 
Mm -hmm. The God who sees you in secret mm -hmm. will reward you openly. The darkness is what allows the power to develop. Mm. It allows the thing to properly take root. That's the reason why I'm calling this shh, <laughs> the secret money in your womb. That's the reason why I'm saying this intimate ladies don't go running and telling and talking and doing all of that extracurricular activity. Mm. It's something that happens in darkness and I'm talking about on multiple levels of darkness, even through the difficulty of my journey and my life, I have found that those darkest moments when my back was up against the wall and I was rejected, it forced me inside. You see, it forced me inside. The darkness forced me to the place of power. Where in earth is most of our greatest wealth and riches? Mm -hmm. Where do we find gold? Where do we find even water? Where do we find oil? Mm -hmm. Where do we find a lot of other valuable uh, 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 stones and so forth? Isn't Doesn't it tend to be underground? Yes. Mm -hmm. This is important to understand that darkness is a yummy place that will help us to develop the life of our dreams. It works. It's the, it's, you have to have both. They absolutely work together. When you don't get enough sleep, my holistic doctor tells me about the importance of when I go to sleep to make sure it's pitch dark as much as possible. Mm -hmm. Because when it's really, really dark, it does more for the healing and the stitching up, you see, mm -hmm. of our bodies. Darkness can heal Darkness heals. And so all of these different things, just utilize what I'm talking about with the seas and darkness, utilize when the womb is developed in darkness. These things are absolutely important to understand. It's nothing to run from. So I believe in working with dark magic and black, ma dark magic, black magic, white light, all of it has its place. But we certainly should not demonize this notion of dark magic or black magic. Oh, wonderful. Hey, listen, I definitely appreciate you coming on the show. Thank you. Uh, you know, much success to you with what you're doing and 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 uh you know um putting out this message mm. and this message of importance of this divine feminine energy. Like I said, I've had this sister Myra on here, and I think that this is the energy that's hitting the planet at this time. Mm. Whether you want to call it big mama energy, dark energy, black that. matter, uh divine feminine, this is the energy that created this universe and it's here to stay. Come on. And it's here to take its spot back. It wants its yes, spot yes. back. You know what I'm saying? It would, yes. you know, <laughs> it wants its spot back. So, you know, That's shout so out good. to the, the divine feminine energy that created all of us. Uh, you know, whether it's my mother or anybody else's mother, we all come Ashe. from that, that holy womb, that black womb. Ashe. So, uh, Ashe. Yeah, yeah, appreciation of that. Leave your contact info, uh, Queen, for the people who might want to reach out to you or and tell them again one more time for those who came in late, how they could sign up for mm -hmm. uh, your workshop this Sunday. Yes, sir. Thank you again so, so very much for this extraordinary opportunity, brother. Unpurposewithvicky.com is where you want to go to register for this Sunday, March 27th, The Secret Money in Your Womb, Part 4. We're going to talk about how we use our divine feminine essence, our being, our electromagnetic field about us to magnetize things um, long range. We're going to activate our long range power, and it's going to be so, so, so yummy. Go to unpurposewithvicky.com. Um, also my contact information is there as well. You can follow me on Instagram at Vicky X Dillard. Um, and you can follow me on most other social media platforms, YouTube, my own personal YouTube page, Facebook, and, um, uh, Twitter at Vicky Dillard. Uh, Twitter is, uh, Dillard Vicky, but you should still be able to find me when you put, um, uh, Vicky Dillard in. It is a privilege, uh, to be here. And I look forward to seeing you. And I want to say this very quickly that mm -hmm. in these tumultuous times, brother rich, where we tend to feel powerless. Mm -hmm. And because some of us aren't politicians or the president or some other world leader or um, some other leader that's within a certain establishment, you see, mm -hmm. we don't deem ourselves to be power, powerful. And this is the reason why they call them witches in the first place to demonize mm -hmm. because you were never to see power in yourself. Mm -hmm. You get to only acknowledge it when it's established over there, when it has a seal on it. And when we tell you it's power, you see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this mm -hmm. notion that you are a witch and you know how to tap into the powers in you mm -hmm. and it actually has an effect about you, that makes you dangerous. 
And that is exactly why we need to tap into our black magic. And that is the power and the importance of the secret money in your womb. Because in a time where they're talking about high gas and they're talking about economic issues, can you imagine when we tap into our magic that we're actually operating in a revolutionary um, uh, when we're in actually, we have the solution. This is the revolution, our spirituality to difficulty, to social ills, to racism, to white supremacy, to lack, to poverty, to injustice. It is my personal belief that our spirituality is a part of that work, our revolutionary act. So get in on this because it causes us to go outside of the system that they tell us that we need to vote for, connect with, stay on. This is the only form of power you have. No, baby, I'm the government around this piece. Mm, mm. Hey, what better way to end it? But with that, family, thank you for joining us once again. Brother Rich, Vicky Dillard, we getting out of here. Make yes. sure you go to the website on purpose with Vicky.com. Thank you. Sign up for the course this Sunday. Thanks for tuning in. We out of here, family. Peace. Peace. All right. Yeah. Power.